I'm about to say a lot of things today that I have just never said on my channel before. Hello everyone, my name is Caitlin and welcome back to my channel. So we're going to be talking about a ship today that's a little bit different than the ships that I usually cover, but at the same time I also feel like it's not really that big of a jump. So of course we're going to be talking about the Kissing Booth series, the relationship between Elle and Noah to be specific. And first and foremost, I just wanted to make it very clear that this series is rated 14A. I'm not really too concerned as while I do mainly talk about Disney Channel on here, my demographics show that over 70% of my audience is over the age of 18. But that being said, I know that there can be discrepancies and all of that, so I just wanted to make it very clear that if you are under the age of 14, this video may not be the right one for you, as this one is a bit more on the teenager or adult side. And this is because we're going to have to cover topics such as sexual activity, alcohol usage, violence, and I will also be touching briefly on topics such as domestic abuse and sexual assault as they become relevant in the story. Now my other point of concern I kind of wanted to get your guys' opinion on because I do want to be able to branch out and cover more ships that don't maybe fit necessarily in the Disney Channel bracket, but I am a little bit concerned that the juxtaposition with my background will make that a little bit difficult for me. Because I don't want people to think that I am like directly targeting kids when I'm talking about shows and movies like this one, but at the same time like I also am sitting here in front of a Descendants poster and a Soy Lunu pillow. And so I don't want my intentions to be misconstrued or to give people the wrong idea as to who I'm targeting with these videos because I've never really thought much about my demographic, but it's never really been for kids. Like I've never sat here and been like, I'm gonna make a two hour video about Austin and Allie and all the seven year olds are really gonna love this. Like, no, I'm talking about relationships and issues that we as adults and young relationships have and how those can be highlighted in children's media as well. But at the same time, I also don't really have a control as to who my videos get presented to, although I do mark them as not made for kids kids. And so, I don't know, I wanted to get your guys' opinion. Do I change the background up a bit? Do I take down the Descendants poster and put something else up there? See, the problem is I just love Descendants so much. Like, yes, I'm 25, but like, I can't think of many other things in my life that I love as much as I love Descendants. Um, and part of me does feel like Soy Luna is niche enough that I can keep it here and people won't really know. Um, and also that girl's been through a lot. Like, she can handle whatever I'm about to talk about today. There is also the fact that I am sat in front of a bluey plush. But like, I'm in front of her, <laughs> so you can't even see her, it's fine. <laughs> like, this is the problem where it's like, these are just my genuine interests, and so I don't want, like, people to get the wrong idea, but at the same time, like, I just can't think of anything else that would be more authentic than putting Descendants and Soy Luna behind me. And so, yeah, I wanted to bring this question back to you guys and get your opinion on things, because, like, while I do want to cover other ships as well, I also don't see myself, like, not covering children's series ships as well either, moving forward. So, I don't know, I'm just a mess of thoughts and feelings up here, so I don't know your guys is, please leave them in the comments down below. But enough about that, let's move on to what we came here to talk about today, which is of course the Kissing Booth series. Now I watched these movies when they first came out, I have not read the books and so this video is going to be solely based off of the movies alone. And I can honestly say that I didn't really think much of these movies when I watched them the first time. I saw them more as just being like a fun series of movies that you can watch with your friends and that's about it. And I know that this series gets a lot of hate, some justified and some maybe not so much, but I just wanted to offer my own personal perspective on the main relationship of of Noah and Elle, and also kind of enter into the world of the kissing booth with a very open mind. And so with all of that being said, let's jump right into chapter one. So we begin our first film where we meet our female protagonist, Elle. She introduces us into the story and kind of gives us a rundown on the history between her and her best friend, Lee, as well as his older brother, Noah. Elle and Lee have basically been inseparable since birth and Noah has just kind of always been there as well. Then as they grew up, Elle started to develop a little bit of a crush on Noah. And Noah, on the other hand, started to develop a little bit of an anger management issue. But this kind of came in handy for Elle as this meant that he would protect them from bullies when they were younger. Despite this perk though, she did still disapprove of his fight and would get mad at him whenever him and Lee would get into fights. But he would make it up to her by fixing her bike in which she would watch him do with hearts in her eyes. Then we move on to their teenage years in which Elle says that she watched Noah get cute, and we see that his unfortunate habit of getting into fights does stick around. But now Elle seems to be a little bit more fascinated with this behavior. In completely unrelated news, this is also when her mom dies and we see her at her grave telling her about Noah. All of this brings us to present day where Elle is now aware of her crush on Noah but claims to have mostly gotten over it. The movie then goes goes on to call her out on this as we see Noah have this like grand slow-mo entrance. And this is also when we are introduced to the main point of conflict in the movie. As she goes on to say that Noah is super hot, but he is also off limits due to a list of rules that her and Lee have made, which list family members as being a big no-go. So Noah comes in to bug Lee and Elle who are chilling by the pool. He calls her Shelly and she calls him Noah, which are both names that they hate being called as Elle's full name is Rochelle. And most people refer to Noah by his last name, which is Flynn. We are then reminded 
granted that both of these characters are hormonal teenagers, as Noah asks Elle when she got the boobs, and then she goes on to check out his ass as he leaves. What an ass. I know. Hey, 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 rule number nine, young lady. Oh, come on. As if. Now, even though this is not the best first impression of Noah, he then goes on to show the following day that he does actually care about her. So it's the first day of a new year and Elle ends up having to wear her old skirt from ninth grade to school, even though it's way too small on her. And for some reason, she decides to not put on any sort of shorts on underneath this skirt, which like, I'm really trying hard not to victim blame here. I don't want it to come across that way, but I just personally feel like putting on some spandex under this skirt would have been the logical thing to do. Anyways, she goes on to school and this guy named Tuppen ends up hitting her on the behind in the parking lot. Lee goes to punch him in response, but quickly realizes that he's way in over his head as his fist gets stopped in the air. Then in comes Noah, who punches him instead and continues to punch him until they are all sent to the principal's office. While waiting in the office, Elle questions his actions and he said that he did it because Lee was in trouble. But then he continues saying that nobody should treat a girl like that, especially not when that girl is her. But he quickly ensures that this comment won't get misconstrued by adding on that it was like watching someone try to get into his little sister's pants, which the whole idea of that is super gross, of course. And besides, no one should treat a girl like that. I mean, especially if that girl's you. Me? Yeah, it's like those guys were trying to get in my little sister's pants, which is super gross. He then goes on to dig his grave deeper by acknowledging her lack of experience and says that the skirt that she was wearing was asking for it. But she does go on to challenge him on this and then he does sort of take his comment back. And then in an odd turn of events, Elle goes on to get detention for her own sexual assault. And so honestly, we're off to a great start. Moving on to detention, we see Tuppen, the guy who hit her earlier, passing her a note apologizing and asking for her number. Noah is not happy about this as he watches over jealously and protectively, which honestly, I feel like is a little bit warranted if she's actually considering going out with this guy. But at the same time, I have to remember that she's never been pursued before. So I do understand her interest and naivety in all of this. Anyways, Elle goes on to accept his apology on the condition that he wear her skirt as payback. And so he does this and everybody's laughing, but Noah is still unimpressed. Which although it is overprotective, again, it is still a little bit warranted as we see later when Elle does agree to go out on a date with him. So we see her showing up that night for her date where she unfortunately ends up getting stood up. So she ends up going to the arcade with Lee instead and then miraculously Tuppen shows up there as well. Almost like he knew that that's where she was going to be, which is a little bit suspicious to me, but I digress. Tuppen goes on to apologize and he also reveals that Noah was the one who threatened him not to go. He continues saying that it's not just him and that he's been telling all of the guys not to go out with her, which would explain why nobody has ever shown her any interest, which I almost wish wasn't the case and not just because it makes Noah look like stupidly controlling, but because I do feel like it is a somewhat common high school experience to just not get asked out in general or have any guy show interest in you. And part of me does feel like it would have made Elle look just like a little bit more relatable if that was the case instead. Anyways, Elle is now furious with Noah, rightfully so. And so she calls him and she asks if he's aware of the fact that he's not her dad. But he says that she still has a lot to learn, that that guy was a player and that she'll thank him for this one day. Which again, like, yes, he is right that Tuppen sucks, but it still wasn't his place at all to make that decision for her. And I hate that they're choosing this as a way to foreshadow that he does have feelings for her as well, because it just screams toxicity to me. Anyways, she goes on to yell at him a little bit more before he hangs up on her. Moving on to our title of the movie, Elle and Lee have decided to run a kissing booth for their school's upcoming fundraiser carnival thing. And while presenting their idea to the student board, Elle ends up promising that Noah will be working the booth. But of course she has yet to speak to Noah about this and the likelihood of him agreeing is almost non-existent. Nonetheless, the promise has been made and so now it's up to Elle to try to convince him into doing the booth. And Lee decides that she needs to get started on this convincing right away. So the following Monday, he offers Noah to give her a ride home instead once he has conflicting plans. Elle agrees to this, but is unaware that that meant on the back of his bike. And then once she is made aware of this, she protests. And this is because she doesn't want to be seen as one of his quote unquote makeout girls on the back of his bike. Instead, she decides to put her headphones in and jog home instead, even though they're more than five miles away. So she runs off saying that she'll see him at his party and he gets mad at her telling her that he told her not to go. Even though I don't personally remember a scene in which he told her not to go, but it is what it is. It's so beautiful outside. I think I'm gonna go for a run. Are you serious? It's like five miles. What? Are you serious? I'm sorry. Can't hear you. Uh, I'll see you at the party, okay? No, you won't, because I told you not to come to the party. So while at the party, Elle gets pressured into asking Noah to do the booth while he is currently making out with somebody else. But she goes up to him and asks him anyways, and to nobody's surprise, he says no. Then she gets like pushed in the forehead by the girl that Noah was kissing, and he is not happy about this. He immediately dismisses the girl, saying that Elle is important to his family, which makes her important to him as well. After the girl leaves, Elle asks again, but he still says no. But this still doesn't stop Elle from going 
going and telling the group of girls that she'll get him to do the booth anyways, because apparently Noah Flynn does whatever she tells him to, which is not the case whatsoever, but I do admire her confidence nonetheless. So Elle then goes on to get really drunk at this party, to the point where she gets up on the pool table and begins to strip all of her clothes off. She is then about to pass out when Noah comes in and puts her over his shoulder and takes her up to his bed. So of course she wakes up the next morning in his room wearing his jersey and she starts to panic. Noah then comes in in only a towel and she goes on to ogle him. He then explains what happened, that he saved her from skinny dipping and she apologizes. She then worries about their sleeping situation, hoping that she didn't snore and he reveals that he actually slept in the guest room. Just as a way to like remind everybody that he is still a gentleman. He is still crazy protective and has a bit of a violent side, but at the end of the day, he does respect her space and will let her sleep in his bed alone. So she stands up to go, but then quickly realizes that she's not wearing any pants. And so she hides behind one of his curtains. She then asks him to pass her the pair of shorts that are on the ground. And he teases her saying that he's not going to, which results in both of them going for them and bumping into each other, causing the curtains to fall down over them. They end up tangled in them and rolling around on the floor. And there's this one moment where Elle says that she touched his bare crotch. Ugh, no, uh oh, fine. It's gonna be so oh. I'm not pulling hurt. I'm not pulling in. Okay, well, my arm is hot. Let me just switch down the <gasps> Oh my god, I just touched it. Oh, of course, Elle does end up getting the shorts though, and so she goes on to leave when Noah makes a joke about her forgetting to give his shirt back. She instinctively goes to give it back, and then he laughs at her, revealing that he was just kidding. And honestly, I'm just like, what a scene. Like, I feel like if it wasn't obvious already that this movie was based off of a book, this one just screams like this was a book adaption. And it's also just one of those things where I feel like maybe this was better suited for the written word than to be seen in a movie, but I guess I'm still entertained, so there's that. So Elle then goes to Lee to reflect on the night before, and she wonders if maybe Noah had a different reason for protecting her, even though he claims to only see her as a sister. We also find out that Elle apparently told everybody that Noah has agreed to work the booth while she was under the influence of alcohol, even though he has not agreed to that whatsoever. But before we get to said carnival, we do have one more round of Elle antics. So after getting into a paint fight with Lee, Elle accidentally wanders into the guy's change room instead of the girl's. And in this process, she takes her shirt off while she still hasn't seen where she is yet. After she gets the paint out of her eyes, she comes to realize her mistake and Noah grabs her arm, telling her to leave. This causes Elle to get mad at him for being controlling and she tells him that she'll leave when she wants to. He tells her again to put her shirt on and get out, but instead of doing this, she yells at him in response to stop telling her what to do. She then takes things a step further, dropping her shirt and going on to dance throughout the guy's change room while they all cheer her on before she leaves. Personally, I feel like I could have done without this scene. Like we already know that Noah is controlling and we already know that Elle is like immune to his charm. And so I'm just like, all right, we get this, let's move on. Um, I feel like it was mainly done for shock value. And I guess that it does hit in that regard, but overall, I'm just like, this scene is a bit much. And I will agree with the haters in that regard. Then we move on to the carnival where Elle tries one last time to get Noah to work the booth. She tells him that she's desperate and just asks him to work the booth for a little while. He teases her for begging and then she turns things on him, saying that she was just asking him to do something nice for the people who care about him, which is a little bit guilt trippy if you ask me. Like the guy said no, and it's not his fault that you promise something that you can't deliver. And I feel like she's acting like she's asking him to do this little favor when it's really not the case. Like you're asking him to kiss people for money. So if he says no to that, I feel like you should respect his decision. Anyways, the kissing booth opens, revealing that those working there are going to be blindfolded. As of course, this is necessary for the events that are about to come. Lee ends up meeting his girlfriend, Rachel, through the booth and they are just so adorable. I love them so much. They are just so wholesome and I would honestly do a whole video just on them if you guys would want to see that. Like, I don't care though, it would probably only be like five to 10 minutes long. But back to the booth, so him and Rachel leave Elle alone with the girls from the party earlier and they trick Elle into going into the booth as payback for her not getting Noah to work it as they think that she's about to go and kiss this really dorky guy. But then of course, right when Elle gets out on stage, the guy that was supposed to be next asks Noah if he wants to cut in front of him. So now Noah is up next, but of course Elle doesn't know this because she is blindfolded. She tries to walk over to her post, but stumbles and Noah catches her. She nervously rambles saying that she's never kissed anyone before. And then he cuts her off by kissing her. While they're kissing, Elle admits that it's not that bad. And then somehow it hits her as to who she's kissing. And then she takes her blindfold off. They stare at each other briefly before Noah quickly kisses her again. Then they both get real into it, basically making out on stage as the camera spins around them. After they both pull back, Noah lets a dam slip from his lips and the whole audience applauds them. Elle is embarrassed, telling him to please kill her now, but then he tells her to relax, saying that it was just a kiss. She internally questions as to whether or not that's true, and then he leaves, telling
telling her to keep up the good work. Elle is now beaming a little bit over this compliment until it hits her that now she has to tell Lee. So she immediately runs to him and tells him and he is shocked by this information. She emphasizes that it was no big deal and it was all just for charity. And so Lee says that it's okay as long as she doesn't end up sleeping with him. Adding that if that does happen, then he will never speak to her again, which is a little bit of an extreme response if you ask me. Just don't end up grinding coochies with my brother or I'll literally never talk to you again. <laughs> <laughs> That and rule number nine, of course. <laughs> of course. Right. Now listen, I know that Lee's main thing is that he feels as though he's been constantly living in Noah's shadow and that he gets everything he wants. And so him having this friendship with Elle is almost like he has something over him. But I still just feel like the reaction to this and the reaction that we see later on is just no way to treat a friend. Especially because he was probably aware of these two having feelings for each other. Like he was the one who came up with this rule to begin with. And I don't exactly think Elle has been very subtle in regards to her crush either. But at the end of the day, she's a person and not his property, so actually she can sleep with whoever she wants and Lee is just gonna have to suck it up. But anyways, now that Elle and Noah have kissed, things do take a bit of a turn from here, and so let's move on to chapter two. So while closing down the booth, Elle sees Noah talking to another girl and is disappointed by this. And so she runs home wondering if their kiss meant anything to him or if she means anything to him. Noah then sees her running home and stops on his bike, offering her a ride. And unlike last time, she agrees and gets on his bike. It then starts to rain because of course it does and then the roads get bad and so he pulls over. The couple then runs into a greenhouse for shelter and it's revealed through Elle's internal dialogue that she does still want to kiss him. And so she does, she runs up to him and kisses him and then he pulls back for a second before going in for another kiss. Then Elle is the one that pulls back as she says that she's worried about becoming just another one of his conquests. Cause I don't know if I mentioned this earlier or if it's just common sense, but Noah does have a little bit of like a player reputation. Nonetheless, he is still hurt by this asking if that's what she thinks of him. She retorts that that's what everyone thinks of him. And then this causes Noah to go into like confession mode. He says that she's the only girl that doesn't fall at his feet and it is just driving him crazy. And honestly, at this point, if you told me that all of this was based off of a Harry Styles fan fiction, I would probably probably believe you. Despite the fact that I was very active during the One Direction fanfiction era, and so if this was one, then I probably would be aware of it, especially if it was big enough to be made into a movie, but we'll get to the after series another time. <laughs> Anyways, he goes on to say that it's one of the things he likes about her, that she's sweet, but she's also not afraid to call him out. She admits that she thought that he only saw her as his little brother's annoying best friend, and he teases that there's that too, but that he also just likes spending time with her. That he doesn't know what any of this means to them, but that it feels right. This confuses Elle, and so he kisses her again, asking if that clears anything up. She then jokes that it didn't and that they should probably try again. And so then they kiss once again. Unfortunately though, this romantic moment is then cut short by a security guard interrupting them. He then tells Noah that he told him not to bring girls there anymore. And so now Elle is upset thinking that he took her to his hookup spot. She takes his jacket off and hands it back to him before running off. But then she quickly comes back and grabs it again, saying that it's cold and yells at him to take her home. And again, I feel like this is another very book-esque scene. And I feel like the further we get into the ship, the more I'm like, yeah, this is good stuff. I really enjoy this greenhouse scene and I feel like on paper, these two have a really good story, at least in the first movie. And I don't know what this says about me, but I just feel like if I was reading this book, I would just be eating up every bit of it. So Noah drops her off at her house and says that he meant every word that he said to her, but she is still not convinced giving him his stuff back before she walks off. We then come to see that her dad is not impressed to see her on the back of Noah's bike. And he goes on to make this very clear to her. Then Elle is up in her room and we see that she can't stop thinking about what Noah said. This leads her to making a pros and cons list in regards to getting involved with him. The pros being that he's a good kisser and smells good, and the cons being that it's against her and Lee's rules, that he drives a motorcycle, that her dad doesn't approve, that he's controlling, that all they do is fight, and that he's a player. So the cons definitely outweighing the pros here, but as we come to see, sometimes you just can't apply logic to love. Or maybe more accurately, these cons were all red flags as they do go on to continue being problems throughout their relationship. And maybe there's a real lesson there into not ignoring the red flags because those will save you some major heartache. With all that being said, we then move on to this beach party that the kids are having. Noah and Elle share a look as she takes her shirt off, showing off the bathing suit that she's wearing. Then this other guy makes a comment about how she never got the chance to skinny dip at Noah's party. And then I guess just like every guy in this universe other than the main characters just sucks apparently because he then goes on to not take no for an answer and grabs her arm, causing Noah to step in. Or actually, I think that this guy does have some character development surprisingly in this series, but I guess that that's irrelevant to the story that we're talking about today. Anyway, 
anyways, Noah shuts him down, emphasizing that she said no, but she says that she's okay and tries to talk him down. She then asks him to take her home and they are about to leave when this guy continues, saying that he would be like that as well if he was quote unquote, slumming it with his little brother's sloppy seconds. And then this causes Noah to attack him. And like, listen, I do not condone violence whatsoever. I'm a lover, not a fighter, but I can say that if someone said that about me, like, I wouldn't be upset about my boyfriend defending my honor either. <laughs> so Noah takes the guy down, but then realizes that Elle is running off, and so he runs after her. And now this is when things get a little bit toxic, as if they weren't already. They get up to the parking lot, and Noah yells at her to get in the car, but she doesn't listen to him. He then goes on to slam his hand on the hood of the car, telling her to get in, and she jumps in fear. Just, just get in the car, Elle. Just get in the car, Al. Get in the car, Al! Now, I would like to think that this is a safe space for me to talk about how much I do not like this moment, but I also feel like at the same time, there probably are still people out there who are blind to the fact that this is just such a big red flag. So I will try my absolute best to explain where I'm coming from. So I already didn't like the glorification of violence that we saw happening earlier on in this movie. The talk of him like always getting into fights and how she would watch just like didn't really sit right with me. But now it's taken a turn as now I feel like she's become directly involved, which just makes the whole thing even worse. And some might think that I'm over-exaggerating, but I honestly don't think it's that far-fetched to wonder how far he would go. Like, when does hitting the car get replaced by hitting her? And I just know for me personally, I just couldn't talk about this scene without highlighting that concern. But overall, I am just so glad that that is not the route that the series chooses to go in and Noah does end up getting the help that he needs. And besides a couple moments in this movie, I do feel like the whole arc in which he is able to become more in control of his emotions is handled pretty well. But back to the movie. So he asks her again, but nicer this time to get in the car and she complies. Noah goes on to apologize for his behavior, but then kind of excuses it by saying that he wasn't expecting to fall for his little brother's best friend. Elle then realizes that he's not taking her home and I feel like this could have gone in a very different direction but thankfully it does not and Noah says that he just wants to show her something. So he takes her to the Hollywood sign to overlook the city and she asks him how many girls he's hooked up with there. But he goes on to say that he only ever comes there alone that is until now. So the typical trope of the dark mysterious guy taking her to his special place that he's never brought anyone there before just to show how special she really is to him and it also shows that he's actually really deep and sensitive on the inside as he has this special place that he goes to on his own to think. But Ella is still not very convinced of this as she laughs at him calling him a player. She continues asking him what the difference is, but then he cuts her off saying that the difference is her. She calls him crazy, but then he retorts that he's crazy for her. You haven't changed. I mean, what is the difference between what just happened? The difference is you. You're crazy. I'm crazy about you, Elle. Now I will admit, part of me does feel like this is escalating a little bit quickly, especially on Noah's side in particular, but I feel like that's probably mainly due to the fact that I'm used to covering ships from shows and not movies. And so I understand that things kind of need to happen a little bit quicker with movies because of the time constraints. Anyways, Elle decides that if they're going to make this work, then they need to establish some rules. Cause I guess she's just not capable of having relationships that don't involve strict guidelines. And so she goes on to list her rules, which are no more fighting, no more telling her what to do, and no one can know that they're a thing until she figures out how to tell Lee. He agrees to these rules, adding that she's cute when she's bossy, and then they go on to kiss. They continue to kiss, and then he says that they don't have to do anything, but then she goes on to take off his shirt in response. He takes hers off too, and then it is implied that they share their first night together. The next morning, we come to see that they're still there, and in the voiceover, Elle says that you know when a time is right, and this was their time. But then she goes on to say that Noah got the best of her, which I feel like is kind of contradictory towards her first statement. So now that the couple have reached an agreement, they really do not shy away in regards to being flirtatious with one another. In the library the next day, he stares at her as she comes in and then she texts him teasingly about reading. He then drives her home on his bike and they continue making out in his room until she stops him by saying that they're supposed to be figuring out how to not get caught. But he doesn't understand what the big deal is as he feels like no one's going to think that he has a girlfriend. They then continue kissing until they are interrupted by a knock on the door. The couple panics and Elle hides under the bed as his mom comes in to collect the laundry. She tells Noah that they're going out on Saturday to celebrate him getting into an Ivy League school and Noah kind of reacts because grudgingly to this. She then continues saying that she invited Elle's family and asks him to be nice to her as she says that Elle has a crush on him. After she leaves, they both laugh at this and then Elle asks what school he got into. He tells her Harvard, but asks her not to tell anyone yet as he hasn't decided if he's going to go yet. This is apparently the first time that it's hit her that he's going to be leaving for college soon and then she seems sad by this. But there's no time for tears as now the couple has to figure out Elle's escape route. So he grabs her arm, bringing her over to his balcony, suggesting that she jump off of it and onto the trampoline that's below them. 
them. Which I feel like I have to add, please do not try this at home, you could literally break your leg. Luckily, Elle does not do this though, but she does end up in the pool by mistake. So now Lee and Elle are hanging out and she gets a text in which he goes to check for her. He's confused as to why there is suddenly a lock on her phone, but she makes an excuse saying that it's because of her little brother. Of course, the text is from Noah and he says that it's kind of fun to sneak around and that it's good being bad. Which I personally feel like is just typical teen behavior, like for some reason it's more fun to date in secret than to just date in general. Which is then emphasized by the dating montage that follows this. We see her on his bike again, then at the pier renting bikes and paddle boats. We also see her buying condoms, so I'm happy to see that they're practicing safe sex at least. There's also a scene where they're messing around in her room and Lee overhears this, causing her to make Noah go out her window as well. There's also a questionable scene in which they have some sexual relations in the science lab and then Elle realizes that there's cameras there and so she now has to go and steal the camera footage of them having relations in the science lab. <laughs> but now that we're kind of reaching the climax of the film, this means that it's time for Lee to find out. So we have Noah working on his bike in the garage and he asks Elle to grab a wrench for him. She accidentally falls while doing this and ends up with a cut on her face. Noah cleans her up because we just had to have a nursing back to health moment as well and she asks when he became such a doctor. He explains that it was when he started getting into fights and then this leads her to question him about them. Noah says that that's just how he's wired and I know that I keep saying this but I feel like that's another big red flag for me. I just feel like if I was in Elle's position and Noah had just told me this, I feel like I would be slowly backing away from that relationship. But you know what, maybe that's unfair on my part. Anyways, Elle encourages him that he can change, saying that there's not much that he can't do. And then Lee comes in, causing them both to jump up. You're Noah Flynn. I don't think there's much you can't do. <laughs> hey Noah, have you seen Elle? He then sees her face and jumps to conclusions, thinking that Noah hit her. And then obviously this offends Noah and the two of them start yelling at each other. Elle then jumps in saying that she tripped in the garage while looking for him, but he still doesn't believe her. And then he continues getting upset with Noah at the thought of him putting his hands on her. And then this is when I go back to the car thing because clearly I wasn't crazy to jump to that conclusion as it's what his own brother thinks of him. Nonetheless, Noah still gets upset with Lee for assuming this and then he goes to attack him, which unfortunately in a way kind of proves his point as well. But then this is when Elle gets in the middle asking him to stop and then she is able to get him to calm down by getting him to look at her. So again, another typical and arguably cringy trope. But at the same time, I do feel like these tropes are to be expected in a film like this one. Obviously this display causes Lee to get suspicious and then he goes on to ask Elle if there's anything going on between the two of them. But she says no and tells him that she'll meet him downstairs. So Elle heads back into Noah and tells him that she's going to tell Lee tonight. And he agrees, adding that this way he can take her to prom, which I think is really sweet. Then we come to see that these two clearly Clearly did not learn anything from their previous mistake as they go on to kiss as Lee enters. Elle quickly says that she can explain, but Lee is already leaving. Noah tries to go with her, but she weirdly orders him to stay like he's a dog. So Elle tells Lee that he was never meant to find out like this, and he is upset, feeling as though it was like he was never meant to find out at all. Noah then disobeys Elle's wishes and comes in, saying that it's not her fault. This causes Lee to get upset with him, saying that he's been going around telling all the guys not to go out with her, while he goes on and treats her like a... I'm just not gonna say that word. <laughs> he uses a very strong S word here, derogatory word. I think you guys can infer what I mean, which I really felt like wasn't a cool term for him to use in regards to his best friend. Obviously, Noah gets further upset with him over this and then Lee punches him. The two of them then get into a fight and Noah pins him on the ground, refusing to get off of him until he calms down. Once he does, Lee runs off and then Elle runs after him. He questions her about their rules and she admits that she didn't plan for any of this to happen. Then Lee tries to offer a bit of his own perspective, saying that Noah has always gotten everything that he wants Wanted, and the only thing that he had that he didn't have was her. Which is kind of a messed up thing to say about your friend, as like I mentioned earlier, she is a person, not his property. And it's also weird because it's not like they were dating and she's cheating on him, like they're friends. So like the whole, you were the only thing I had that he didn't, like I just feel like that's weird because you were just friends. But nonetheless, I get that this is a very heated moment for him and he's feeling very betrayed. Anyways, he drives off saying that the two of them deserve each other. And so now that Lee's gone, Elle turns her attention on Noah and she gets upset with him for coming down when she told him not to. She feels as though he made things worse and she asks him what's wrong with him. Which is also a bit of a messed up thing to say, but again, I'm just gonna excuse it as being like a heat of the moment sort of situation. He says that she can't blame all of this on him and she is defeated asking that he just just leave her alone. Why did you come downstairs? I told you to stay inside! Like you wanted to make things worse! What is wrong with you? You cannot pin all this on me. Just 
leave me alone. So their secret is out now, and I feel like it's safe to say that they did not skimp out whatsoever when it came to the theatrics of it all. Which is good, I mean, the minute you hear about the main conflict of this movie, which is in like the first three seconds of it, you're already anticipating the fallout of it all. And I would say that they delivered in terms of getting us that big dramatic scene. I do wish that Elle could have maybe not turned all of her anger on Noah because I don't think it was deserved. Even though her and Lee's friendship is crumbling, it would have been cool if her and Noah's was still strong throughout it. But in reality, that is not the case. And so now that their secret is out and the two of them have broken up for the time being, it's time for chapter three, which is also our final chapter in regards to the first movie. So Elle says that the next few weeks were pretty lonely. Apparently Noah has stopped going to school altogether and has just gone completely MIA. And so clearly this whole situation has done quite the number on him. But Elle says that having Lee ignore her was even worse, which part of me wants to be mad at her about, but a bigger part of me is glad that she's putting this lifelong friendship that she has with Lee over this relationship that she's had with this guy for who knows how long. So then we see Elle try to get Lee to forgive her, but every attempt that she has fails. Meanwhile, we see Noah go to Elle's dad and he apologizes. He says that he shouldn't have let their relationship happen and takes all of the blame. But then he emphasizes that he's not sorry that it did happen or for how he feels about her. Ultimately, her dad says that he doesn't support them, but in the end, it's Elle's decision to make and not his. Which I personally felt like was a really interesting plot point that kind of gets abandoned after this film. I personally feel like it would have been a really nice moment if we could have seen them revisit this in the second or third movie, just with like her dad giving them his blessing or something to kind of like make this a full circle moment. But then at the same time, I feel like he probably wouldn't have given them his blessing just because they continue to be pretty toxic throughout the next two movies, so maybe there's a reason why we never revisited this plot point. But now that Noah has somewhat won her dad over, it's time for him to try to win her over as well. So Lee and Elle do end up making up, and she decides to go to prom with him and his girlfriend. Their prom theme is memories, and so the kissing booth that they made ends up getting showcased. And once Elle sees this, Noah comes out, and he says that they're next after watching Lee and Rachel kiss. But Elle says that she can't, and she goes to leave. Which I feel like people have definitely pointed this out before, but she is just so good at doing that in this movie in particular. She is constantly throughout this movie just being like, nope, gotta go, which part of me does relate with because like I'm also in a constant state of just wanting to go home. But Noah goes on to ask her to wait and so she asks him why. And so this is when he says that he loves her and that he's telling her that he loves her in front of everyone. But she says that she's sorry and that she can't keep hurting the people that she cares about because of him. She then says that nobody wants them to be together and he agrees, but then he asks her what she wants. I can't keep hurting people that I care about because of you. Okay, nobody wants us to be together. No, that may be true. But what do you want? Now, I feel like this is a funny moment to be reminded of, especially after rewatching the whole series, because Elle making decisions based off of how it will make other people feel is definitely something this girl struggles with, especially in the third movie. She is just not good at putting herself first when necessary, but like I said, one thing she is good at is leaving. And so she says that what she wants is to go, and then she runs off. Later that night, we see Noah do something that he probably should have done before his grand display of affection, but it's go to Lee and apologize. He said that he was never playing her and that he meant everything that he said to her tonight. Then we find out that he's leaving for Boston the very next day so that he can get settled in ahead of time. And it definitely doesn't feel like he's the one running away this time. The next day is Elle and Lee's joint birthday party, as I don't know if I mentioned this earlier, but they were born on the same day. Near the end of the party, Elle asks about Noah, but Lee says that he's already left. She is saddened by this, and then we see her looking off at his closed room and reminiscing on their relationship. And then this causes her to become just so overwhelmed with emotions that she runs off. This time though, Lee stops her and she's finally able to speak the truth to him. She says that their rules are outdated and that real friends should be supportive of the ones they love, which I just could not agree with more and it is just so nice to finally hear somebody say this to him. She then admits that she feels the same way that Noah does and that she loves him with every bit of her heart. Lee then basically says the same thing that her dad said to Noah, which is that he thinks she's making a big mistake, but that he loves her and just wants her to be happy. I think you're making a big mistake. And that's my decision to make. You're right. I love you, Helen. I just want you to be happy. Now I honestly just feel like this whole scene is just so satisfying. Cause while I understand that most of his feelings were stemming from sibling rivalry and that that's not really something that he can control, at the end of the day, he shouldn't have been making his problems with his brother her problem. And so yeah, this scene was just long overdue and just very satisfying to me. So Elle then says that she has to go find Noah and tell him how she feels. And Lee agrees to help because what Elle doesn't know is that Noah actually hasn't left at all. He's actually been up in his room the whole time. And so Lee gets the idea of doing a little switcheroo. So he tells Elle to go and wait in the car and then he 
goes and tells Noah his plan. So then he gives him his Batman costume, and then we see Elle get into the car with who she thinks is Lee. She says that she just has to find Noah and tell him how she feels. And then Noah reveals himself to her, and then she almost ends up crashing the car. So they pull over, and he explains that he was about to leave, but then he just had to see her one last time. He asks her what she wanted to tell him, and so she says that she loves him, and then he says it back to her. We then see the couple back at the greenhouse, where they share a kiss once again. And then we get another montage of them spending time together before he has to leave. And so all of this brings us to their final moments in the airport. He says that he'll see her soon, that she can come visit, and that they can make this work. But she begs him to stop, saying that she just wants to be with him for a few seconds more. She then asks him to not turn back for a final wave once he gets to the top of the escalator because that's just too cheesy and romantic. They kiss goodbye, hug, and then he's off. And so she waits for him to get to the top of the platform, and even though this is exactly what she told him to do, he does not turn back and say goodbye, which she is a bit disappointed by. I mean, I guess it's one of those situations where she told him not to do it in a joking way, like, make sure you don't do this, like, and I'm saying this because I want you to do this, but still, I feel like she could have been more clear if that was what she wanted him to do. I'm a big fan of just communicating what you want and not playing any of those like mind games because it's just not gonna lead you anywhere that you're gonna like. Anyways, she leaves the airport and it's revealed that he gave her his bike and so that's what we see her ride home on and that is how we close out the first movie. Now, all in all, I definitely think that this movie is the best one out of the three. It's the most entertaining, it tells the most cohesive story, and I personally feel like this whole franchise probably would have really benefited from just this movie being a standalone movie. Take out all of the Harvard stuff, have them meet a year earlier, and just end the movie with the two of them riding on his bike together off into the sunset or something. Because honestly, besides all of the Harvard stuff, I personally feel like their story is pretty much over after this movie. We really did not need two sequels to it, and the fact that they tried to milk two sequels out of this story just made for two very lackluster and arguably boring films. I honestly wouldn't be surprised if it takes me roughly the same amount of time to cover these next two movies as it took me to cover the first movie alone, which would also further prove my point. Nonetheless, let's move on to The Kissing Booth 2. So we start off again with another rundown from Elle, and she goes on to explain all that they did the summer before Noah left. So I guess like in between the gap of like them getting back together and her dropping him off at the airport. And this rundown includes them opening Noah's family's beach house and them going on various dates together. But then we catch up to present day where we see that long distance is going to be harder for the couple than we thought. Elle has decided to give Noah space and she does this by, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, not texting him for the entire summer, even though he said himself that he wanted to give long distance a try. And then when we do see her reach out to him, it's really weird and cryptic as all she says is quote unquote, take care, which almost sounds like maybe she knows something that he doesn't. Noah continues to text her and she doesn't reply, and so this results in him calling the school. He pretends to the secretary that there's something going on with her dad so that Elle will get pulled out of class and answer the phone, which is a bit of an extreme response, I feel like, to being ghosted by your girlfriend, but it's whatever. So Noah asks her why she's being weird and if she's breaking up with him, but she says no and that she's just trying to be mature and not come off as clingy. He reiterates that he wanted to make this work, but she says that she wanted to give him space, which again was a weird conclusion conclusion for her to jump to and it was not the conclusion that they came to together. So he says that he doesn't want space and that what he wants is her, encouraging her to call and text him as much as she wants and she agrees. I don't want space, I want you. I, I want you around me all the time. I want you with me right now actually. I just, I just want you, okay? <laughs> text me. You call me. Send me a messenger pigeon, whatever it is. <laughs> okay, whatever it is, just don't give me space, okay? Okay. Now, despite the means that he took to get her to finally talk to him, this is something I do like to see. Communication is good, and I feel like this couple could have benefited from even more of it, which kind of ends up being their main conflict in this movie. Later, we see them on a FaceTime call sharing I miss you's, and she asks him about school and if he's the big guy on campus now. Noah says that things are different there and kind of gets weird about this question, quickly switching topics. He then asks her about school and questions why she's only applying to one. And I agree that this is not a smart thing to do, but she explained earlier that her and Lee have always planned on going to Berkeley together. But nonetheless, he encourages her to apply to some schools in Boston. And then this is when things take a turn as we are then introduced to some new characters. For Noah, it's Chloe, and for Elle, it's Marco. And while they both have very different relationships with these two people, they ultimately end up creating conflict for the couple, and so let's move on to chapter four.
So amongst all of this, a new guy named Marco has joined their school, and he has kind of taken over Noah's status as being the new hottest guy in school. And we see that Elle in particular is not shy at all about her attraction towards him. This is emphasized the following day when Elle gets tricked into going on about how hot he is over the PA system. This lasts for way longer than necessary, and she ends up saying a lot of things that someone with a boyfriend definitely should not be saying. She then digs her grave further when Rachel asks him if he's really that hot, and she says that he can quote unquote, get it. Which again, I just personally feel like is something you should not be saying about another guy when you're in a relationship. Like if it's a celebrity, maybe, but just like this other random guy at your school, like no, you should not be saying that. But of course, this was all just a setup for Marco to come in behind her right when she says this. So she stumbles through a conversation with him and he ends up teasing her for calling him a snack. Then we come to find out that Noah has met someone else as well the following night while they're on FaceTime. Basically, a bunch of guys come into Noah's room while they're talking and amongst all of these guys is this one British girl that Elle ends up getting intimidated by. This leads her into stalking his Instagram to find out who this girl is. Before all of this though, there is a little bit of an important piece that I missed, which is that Noah also got her a Harvard hoodie and a plane ticket to Boston to visit him. And she also reveals to him that she did apply to some schools in Boston as well as Harvard, and so she's going to go and visit him and also go on some college interviews. But this wouldn't be a kissing booth movie without the said kissing booth, and so meanwhile we see Lee and Elle planning their school's fundraiser kissing booth once again. But this time they need to get Marco to agree to do the booth now that Noah is gone. So while at the arcade, she asks him and he wagers that he'll do it if she can beat him at a game in the arcade. So she of course picks the Dance Dance Mania game that her and Lee are pros at. But what she doesn't know is that Marco is also a pro at this game as well. That being said, Elle still wins and so Marco agrees to do the booth. But enough of that, it is time for Elle's trip to Boston. So we see Noah pick her up from the airport with the sign that says that he missed her. She runs to him, he picks her up, and then they suck face for a bit. We then come to find out that he has switched out his bike for a moped as the couple goes on to travel around Boston together. Which of course results in another montage moment of the two of them doing various things throughout the city. Which is another thing that this series just goes crazy for, like they truly love a good montage moment. Anyways, we then see them at dinner and Noah reassures her that she's going to do great at her upcoming interviews. She then makes a flirtatious comment that catches Noah by surprise and then we see the two of them running back home to get uh more acquainted with one another. But we quickly come to see that things are not going to be smooth sailing from here. The following night, they go out to dinner with Noah's friends, but Elle just can't get over the fact that the girl from earlier isn't there. But then Chloe arrives and Elle goes on to watch her a bit too intensely in my opinion, almost like she's the one that maybe might have feelings for her. She then goes on to get insecure by watching the way that Noah looks at her while she talks. And then things really take a turn. So the following day when Elle is packing up, she finds an earring under Noah's bed. Then she sees that Noah got a text from Chloe and continues to read their entire texting exchange. And then she kind of uses these texts to confirm her suspicions, even though I personally feel like there really wasn't anything incriminating in those text messages. Then Noah comes in and asks her what's wrong, but she doesn't reply to him saying that she has to get to the airport. He asks her to talk, but she says that if he wants to talk to someone, then he can check his phone. And then she storms out. What's going on? Hey, is everything okay? I gotta get to the airport. Talk to me, what's up? If you wanna talk to someone, just check your phone. Help! Help! Now this is something that I'm not proud of, but I can say that I myself have been guilty of before. Like you're in an argument with someone and you feel hurt by them. And so you say something that you know will hurt them and then immediately remove yourself from that situation. What she should have done is been like, here, I found this earring. And also I look through all of your texts with Chloe and it's really not making me feel too good about this whole situation. But instead she said a jab and then completely removed herself from any further communications, which I just personally feel like is not the healthiest thing to do. But at the same time, I have to remember that she's young and that we all have to make these mistakes to learn from them. Later, Noah calls her and asks why she was so upset when she left. Elle says that it was because she was looking at the life that he has without her and that she wasn't used to seeing him around all of these college girls. He immediately knows that she's referring to Chloe and says that she's just a friend. Elle wants to believe him and he says that there's no reason not to, but she feels as though that there is due to the earring that she found. Instead of telling him this though, she says that she does believe him and they share I love yous. In other news though, Elle has found a flyer for a Dance Dance Mania competition. Her and Lee decide to sign up for this so that Elle can use the prize money for college. But then while training, Lee accidentally falls and her 
Roberts' ankle. We do come to find out later that he actually faked it, but that's kind of not really relevant to our love story here. Anyways, he suggests that she team up with Marco instead, and although she's not too enthused by this idea, she does go on to do this. Then later, we finally see Elle question Noah about the earring. She calls him and explains to him that that was the reason why she was so upset before, but he promises that he has no idea as to how the earring got there and suggests other reasons as to how it did get there. That, of course, do not include him sleeping with her. But Elle still has a hard time believing what he's saying due to his past reputation. Noah says that that's not fair and asks if he's ever given her a reason to doubt him. She agrees that he hasn't and so he asks her to trust him. It's just that knowing your past, it's hard not to think. That's not fair at all. Have I ever given you reason to doubt me? No. Okay, then I'm asking you to trust me. And in the end, he says that he's glad that she told him about that earring. And I am too. I love communication and I assume this type of communication in particular is probably really hard to bring up because you don't want to be talked out of your perceived opinion, especially when it's cheating involved. But I like how things were handled here, particularly because Noah isn't cheating. And so I feel like it makes the whole situation a lot easier. But speaking of cheating, Elle and Marco have been rehearsing for the upcoming competition throughout all of this. And they have kind of been bumping heads as he feels as though she's not having enough fun with it. She later texts Noah asking to talk and receive receives no answer, and so she decides to call him, resulting in another guy answering his phone, and he reveals that he's at a concert with Chloe. And then this is kind of what pushes her over the edge to become even more comfortable with Marco. So during their next rehearsal, they fight about the same thing once again, and Elle ends up apologizing for giving him a hard time. This leads to them deciding to take a break and grabbing something to eat. And then we see them on the Ferris wheel, where things start to get very questionable. So he says that she inspires him, that she knows what she wants, and she goes for it. And she says that she admires him for just always wanting to be happy. Then they go on to sit at the beach and she tells him about Chloe. She says that she doesn't know if they're together or not, but feels as though it's hard to hold on to someone when you can feel them slipping away. Which I feel like is somewhat frustrating when Noah has done nothing but communicate to her that she's the one he wants to be with. And I almost feel like everything that has made her feel the opposite has almost been invented by her. Which kind of makes me wonder if this is just all a form of self-sabotage. But maybe that's a bit extreme as it could also just be naivety and insecurity. Or I guess he does lie about spending time with Chloe later on, but that hasn't happened yet. And so I feel like at this point, the only one fueling this fire is Elle. Anyways, this is when Marco really swoops in. He says that if he found someone who was smart and fun and liked all of the same things as him, he would never make them feel that way. He then goes on to say some stuff about love and not letting it slip away. And just, I don't know, it sounded like a lot of words to me, but she seemed to like it. So that's great. He then goes on to whip out his guitar. And I'm just like, Elle, seriously? Like, I know she doesn't have that much experience, but I still feel like she should not be won over that easily. Anyways, Noah does go on to call Elle back and then he apologizes for the previous night. She says that it's okay and then asks who he went to the concert with. He then lies to her like I mentioned previously and says that he just went with some guy friends. And I get that he's only lying because he knows that she won't react well, but still I just feel like this wasn't a good look for him. Like he should have just been honest and told her who he was with. Moving on, it is now Halloween, and so we see Elle, Lee, and Rachel at a Halloween party. Marco asks Elle to dance, and she says that that would be nice. And then their slow dance quickly turns into more of like an inappropriate hugging sort of situation. They even almost kiss until Elle overhears someone commenting on how quickly she seems to have gotten over Noah. So now I feel like it's safe to say that she has crossed the line just from like emotional cheating to just full on cheating. And then this brings us to another montage. This time it's of Noah and Chloe getting closer together at the same time that Marco and Elle are getting closer together as well. Noah's texts to Elle start to get ignored and then she ends up insta-stalking Chloe once again, only to find a photo of her wearing the earring that she found under Noah's bed. This leads to Elle having another almost kiss with Marco during their final rehearsal together. So I'm sure you can infer as to what's to come during their performance. And speaking of their performance, it is time for that. The day before she receives a call from Noah wishing her luck and she is touched that he remembered. Then we get the reveal during their performance that Noah has surprised her as he is in the audience, which is very unfortunate for Elle as at the end of her routine, she kisses Marco. But I guess it's unfortunate either way because even if he wasn't in the audience, he still would have found out about it. And I'm sure it was just like a spur of the moment situation, but still just like talk about terrible timing on her part. Like I'm not just gonna cheat on my boyfriend, but I'm gonna do it in front of like the entire world. Like I get that she also thought that he was cheating, but still I feel like that doesn't excuse her actions here. Anyways, the 
lights then go up and Elle sees Noah in the crowd. He gets up to leave and she tries to run after him, but then gets held back by the two of them winning. Afterwards, Elle runs out, but Marco stops her, wanting to talk about them instead. He asks if they're just going to ignore what's happening between the two of them, and she takes a note from movie one Elle saying that she can't deal with this right now and leaves. Now, I think we all know at this point that I do not condone cheating whatsoever, but I will say that whenever I think about how much I don't like this movie, I feel like I'm reminded of this scene and how good I feel like it is. It almost reminds me of the first movie, how we were waiting for things to come to a head with her and Lee. And so this time around, we were waiting for things with Marco to escalate, and then they really just added that cherry on top by putting Noah directly into that equation. And seeing him go from like excited and proud to just heartbroken is almost devastating to watch. But unfortunately, it does also make for a really entertaining moment. But now that the cat has been let out of the bag in regards to the Marco situation, it is time for chapter five. So the following day, Noah shows up to Thanksgiving with Chloe and things get very tense as if they weren't already. Then it is time for everyone to share what they're thankful for and Elle ends her list with saying that she's thankful for finding Chloe's earring under Noah's bed saying that she's glad that she found it before she did something crazy like rearrange her whole life for him. And like, listen, I know that she's convinced that her suspicions have now been confirmed that he has been cheating on her with Chloe, but at the same time, I'm just like, the audacity of this woman to make this about him when she had just kissed another guy in front of everybody is like mind blowing to me. And he does not shy away in drawing her attention to this in his reply when he says that it looks as though she's already done that. And so of course, Elle responds to him in the only way that she knows how, which is by leaving. And and so now it is time for Chloe to do some explaining. And so she tells Noah that she crashed at his place one time when he was away without his permission. She assumes that the earring fell off then and reassures him that they can fix things. But he says that he just can't stop thinking about her kiss with Marco and that he can't believe that she would actually think that he would cheat on her. Chloe then explains things from Elle's perspective, reminding him of his previous reputation. And she emphasizes that Elle doesn't know that she doesn't have any interest in him. He ends up saying that he hates when she's right, but I'm just like, I don't know. I feel like Chloe is going a little bit too easy on Elle here. And I feel like as Noah's friend, she should have been acknowledging Elle's faults in this situation as well to give him some sort of reassurance. But then we move on to the homecoming game. Noah and Chloe go together and this affects Elle as we see her looking very sad throughout the game. The two of them also share glances at one another throughout it. Afterwards, Marco notices Noah there and then he begins to like instigate something with him. And then this is when we finally see some of that character development that I talked about earlier. This is really the first time in which his anger issues get brought up again and I feel like he handles this whole situation really well. He basically goes up to him ready to punch him, but then he backs off. Whereas I feel like Noah from the first movie wouldn't have even hesitated in regards to attacking him. Then we move on to the airport as Chloe and Noah get ready to head back to Boston. But Chloe has other plans as she encourages him to do something about Elle, saying that if he loves her, then he needs to go to her and tell her that. Meanwhile, the school's fundraiser is in full swing and it is now Elle's turn to work the kissing booth. Of course, Marco comes up to her and he requests a minute of her time instead. He apologizes for instigating with Noah the other day, but says that she can't deny that there's something between them. She confesses that she does have feelings for him, but says that he's not the one. She then apologizes for the hurt that she might have caused and then leaves to go find Noah. But you're not the one that I'm lying to myself about. And that's why I have to go and I have to find him and find out what really happened. I have to hear him out and make sure that he knows that I'm not slipping away. And honestly, this whole scene gave me a really weird vibe. It almost looked like green screened in, in a way, and maybe it is, and that's the explanation. I honestly don't know. I mean, maybe it was the fact that they were trying not to show the crowd and make it more of like an intimate moment. But I personally just like couldn't ignore the fact that like everybody was watching them. And I feel like every other kissing booth scene has always included cuts to the audience. And so for this one not to, it just like left the whole scene feeling really odd to me. Back at the airport, Chloe spots her and reveals that Noah went to find her. She also offers some clarity for Elle saying that the earring meant nothing and that Noah wanted her to come to Thanksgiving so that they could become friends. Elle then gets a text from Noah asking where she is and then he tells her to meet at their place. And so now it is time for their grand reunion, which in my opinion, doesn't really feel deserved. So Elle goes to the greenhouse where Noah is waiting for her. They run to each other and he takes her in his arms. Then they both talk over each other before Noah says that he has to say something. And so now it is confession time once again, because apparently this man can only reveal things when they're at this greenhouse. But he explains that when he started at Harvard, he wasn't doing too well, that he didn't have any friends and he was doing badly in his classes. And he didn't want to say anything before because he was embarrassed. Then he says that 
everything changed after he met Chloe and she invited him into her friend group. He also admits that he always wanted a friendship like hers and Lee's and it hurt him that she felt like they couldn't be just friends. But Elle reasons that it was more about her comparing herself to her than anything else. And she also admits that after he left, she just assumed that they would end. And so when she found that earring, she made that the thing that ended things. Which is basically what I've been saying all along. But we still have another problem on the table and that's Marco. So Noah admits that he doesn't really care that she kissed him, which I found interesting because I feel like he should. If anyone is guilty in this situation, it's definitely Elle. She was basically cheating on this man for the majority of this movie, but we're just going to ignore that because she only did it because she thought that he was cheating on her. When that's not 100% accurate because she did also have feelings for him. But anyways, he asks her to tell him if she loves him, and she says that it's him, that it's always been him, and then they kiss. So I guess what they're trying to say here is that her whole relationship with Marco doesn't matter because Noah is the one that she truly loves. And so anything that happened with Marco is irrelevant because she doesn't actually feel anything for him. Or at least she doesn't feel anything for him that's as strong as what she feels for Noah. Whereas I personally feel like if you truly love someone, you don't put them through what Elle put Noah through in this entire movie. But as we all know, the series does not end here. So now it's time for this movie to set us up for the third one, which I definitely think was the worst one from the series. Like I have my gripes with the second movie, but like like at least I was entertained for the most part. Whereas with The Kissing Booth 3, I can definitely say that it was bored throughout the majority of that movie. Anyways, they go on to have their graduation and afterwards Elle says that she got waitlisted at both Harvard and Berkeley. But then we come to find out that she actually lied and she did get into both schools. So Elle now has a choice to make, but for the time being, she just wants to do something fun. So we end the movie with the core four racing off into the mountains once again. And before we move on to that third movie, I just have to say, while I didn't hate the second movie, part of me is kind of of annoyed by the fact that we spent so much time on an earring as being one of the main plot points of this film. Like it was two hours long and I feel like it didn't need to be two hours long. We could have just focused on the Marco stuff, which I personally feel like was the real meat of the movie and then cut that whole earring stuff down by like a quarter. I feel like that would have made for a more entertaining and less annoying movie, but that's just my personal take on things. But on to our last movie. So the Kissing Booth 3 picks up right where we left off. Elle reveals that the gang went on a week long road trip. So of course we get the rundown of all the fun things they did during that week. We also get a reminder of that accidental video that was filmed of them in the first movie in the science lab, which I personally could have done without the reminder, but Elle says that they watched it and then destroyed it. These fun times don't last for long though, as Elle's post-secondary education decision is still weighing heavily on her. And we see this when Noah is giving her a back massage by the pool and he asks her about her plans, suggesting that if she does get off the wait list for Harvard, then maybe they could move in together. And this honestly made me a little bit sad to hear. And so I was very happy that this wasn't what ended up happening because while living with your partner is great and everything, it just would have made me sad if Elle never got that like true college roommate experience first. Anyways, Elle is touched that he wants to move in with her and so she teases him about this for a bit before they suck face again. She then goes on to whisper some things in his ear and then the two of them go off to do the deed. Later on, Noah's parents break the news to them that they're planning on selling their beach house. And this is just devastating news to them even though we have only heard about this beach house like once in the second movie. Nonetheless, the four of them decide to move into this beach house for the summer to try to help them sell it and also get as much use out of it as possible before it's gone. And then the next day, Elle is forced to make her college decision and so she chooses Harvard. She tells Noah about her choice and he picks her up and spins her. And Lee also sees this happen and is disappointed by it. So we seem to get an answer to that cliffhanger quite quickly and I assume it was the choice that everyone thought she would make. But just as things seem to be going great, it is time for a shadow from Elle's past to make his return. And once again, he does become a main conflict for the couple and so it's time for our next chapter, all about Marco once again. So Elle has been working at this restaurant over the summer and of course Marco shows up there. Chloe is back again too, but she doesn't really cause any conflict for the couple and so that's why I didn't include her in the title this time around. But her parents are having some issues and so she asks if she can crash at their beach house. Noah makes sure to ask Elle's opinion on this first and she's cool with it, but then makes things awkward when she brings Marco back into the equation. And before we get to how she does that, we kind of have to summarize the non-romantic plot that's going on right now. So her and Lee are working at a summer bucket list and one of the items on that list is doing a real life Mario Kart. And Marco ends up getting involved because he works at a water park that has go-karts. And so she asks him if they can do it there and he agrees to help them. And so Elle brings all of this up to Noah and he does not like the idea of her spending time with Marco once again, which I personally think is very valid, but she says that he's creating a double standard. But Noah kindly points out that he didn't kiss Chloe and then he leaves. Oh, hmm. Marco. Wait, that's, that's kind of a double standard. I was totally fine with Chloe. Well, I didn't kiss Chloe. 
And while you could compare this argument to the one that happened in the second movie where Elle said a jab and then left, it's really hard for me to look at these two situations with the same lens when I'm just like, yeah, like Noah's right. I don't really understand what Elle is doing here and I just feel like she's creating more problems. But that being said, she still decides to move forward with their water park plans. She tells Marco that Noah agreed to come and support them, but he will not be participating or wearing the costume that she asked him to wear. This brings us to the day of the race where Marco ends up showing up in that costume instead. Noah sees this and then this causes him to decide to race. The two end up going at it pretty hard and then when Marco wins, Noah is upset by this. Afterwards, Marco goes to give Noah a handshake, but he just stares at him blankly and then turns around. Elle asks him if he's okay, and so he asks her why the guy that she kissed in front of everyone is wearing the costume that she asked him to wear. But this just causes her to get upset with him, saying that he always blows everything out of proportion. But again, like I'm team Noah, I feel like everything he's bringing up here is extremely valid. So he goes on to say that it's clear that he's still after her and calls her naive and says that it's embarrassing. Why the guy that you kissed in front of the whole world Noah. is wearing the costume that Noah. you asked me to wear? Noah. Why is he wearing you it? You always just blow things way out of proportion. It's very clear that he's still after you, and if you don't he's get that- He's not, because there's nothing going on between Marco and me. If you think that he's not still after you, then you're being naive. It's embarrassing. Now, definitely a little bit of a harsh delivery from Noah there, but I feel like this wouldn't be happening if she could just acknowledge his feelings and validate them a little bit. Anyways, then we get a scene between Lee and Elle where Elle complains about him not trusting her, as well as a similar scene between Noah and Chloe where Chloe says that she just needs to trust her, which I'm like, yeah, that's true, but at the same time, I can also understand why he doesn't. And I find it kind of annoying how in the last movie, everyone was justifying Elle's actions based off of Noah's previous perception. And so I don't understand why when the tables are turned, Noah isn't given that same courtesy especially when it's the same guy from before. But moving on, Noah decides to make it up to her by organizing a romantic candlelit dinner for the two of them. Unfortunately though, Elle isn't able to make this dinner due to some plans that she has with Lee. They end up fighting over this because Elle has basically been breaking her back to spend as much time with Lee as possible, and this has left Noah to feel a bit abandoned. The two of them get into a fight and she promises to be back in an hour, but he no longer cares. The following day, we see Noah talk to Chloe about what's going on, and he says that he feels as though things started to fall apart Part ever since she moved in for the summer. Chloe asks if she's just going to give up on her and he says that he's not, but that he's also just tired of fighting. But this just leads Chloe to encourage him to fight for her. And honestly, at this point, I'm wondering if she's Noah's friend or else, because I feel like she's constantly not listening to him or validating his emotions. And I understand that they're using her to offer a female perspective for Noah and that she's relating everything that's going on between them to what's going on with her parents. But at the same time, I just feel like that makes her not a very good friend to Noah. Now, Elle, on the other hand, she ends up confiding in and Marco. So he comes in one day when she's working and asks if she's okay. Then we see them on the beach and she tells him about how stressed she's been lately. And then this leads him to offer to come back after her shift so that they can talk further. But instead of that happening, Noah is the one that comes in after she's done working. He brings her a rose and puts a record on asking her to dance. Elle says that she doesn't like fighting and he agrees, but says that he will fight for her. Now, as nice as this moment is, I just can't help but feel as though they haven't actually resolved any of their conflicts. But I guess that is about to catch up with them immediately following this. So now it is the 4th of July, which of course means that they're throwing a big party for it. Marco shows up to this party and Noah is not happy about this. This causes him to get overly competitive during a game of beach volleyball where he ends up spiking a ball directly into Marco's face. Afterwards, Marco calls him an asshole and once again, Noah shows his growth when he calmly asks him not to be a sore loser and to watch his mouth. Marco retorts that he was just trying to have a good time whereas he was trying to hurt somebody, which is a bit of a hypocritical thing to say and Noah does not shy away in drawing his attention to this in asking him once again what he is actually trying to do. He then goes on to take things a bit too far in my opinion, like I feel like he probably should have just walked away here, but I do get that that is less entertaining, and so he says that nobody is buying this innocent friend act that he has going on, and that it's clear that he still wants Elle. Elle then interjects, asking them to stop, and Marco tells Noah to shut up. But instead, Noah decides to escalate things further, yelling that everybody here knows that he wants her, which results in Marco cutting him off with a fist to the face. Noah then stares at him a bit before leaving, saying, that he's not doing this. Guys, can you please stop this? You still want L, and everybody here knows that. So I said shut so up. The sooner you get that through your thick skull, the sooner you can- <laughs> oh! no! So I feel like this is supposed to be the movie's big climax, or at least the start of it, but I just personally feel like the stakes aren't nearly as high as they were in the previous two movies. Elle has already chosen Noah, and so I feel like at this point we're just beating a dead horse. And I kind of feel similar about this to how I felt about the earring plotline from the previous movie, in that the college stuff is the main part of this movie, and so we should have just focused on that and kept all the Marco drama in the drafts. But I guess maybe if they did that, then we wouldn't have even had a movie to begin with, which now they think about it, maybe that's not such a bad thing. So Elle runs after 
after Noah and begs him to say something, and all he says is that he asked her not to let him back into their lives. Then Elle goes back inside, and she is met with the other point of their triangle. Marco apologizes, but says that Noah was pushing him, and he didn't know what to do. But Elle is not having any of this. Clearly, she's too upset to have this conversation, and so she tells him that he needs to go. But then he confesses that Noah is right, that he messed up, but it doesn't change how he feels about her. He continues, saying that he knows that she's not supposed to be with him, and then raises his voice, asking her to give him another chance. But again, she just yells at him to stop, and then asks him to leave before she runs upstairs. So yeah, I definitely don't think this was the right time or place for Marco to have this big declaration of love, and I'm not really too sure why he chose to do it anyways. Maybe it was like a spur of the moment kind of situation, like their kiss from the last movie. But again, bad timing and just bad move from Marco, and I'm also just confused as to like why he's even doing it to begin with when she already made it clear in the previous movie that she doesn't want to be with him, she wants to be with Noah. But that being said, that's pretty much it for the Marco drama, and so let's move on to our final chapter of this video. So it's the next day and we come to see that Noah never came back. Elle then realizes that she knows where he is and so she goes to the Hollywood sign. She apologizes to him and says that he was right about Marco, even admitting to the fact that she didn't handle that situation correctly. But Noah doesn't let her take all of the blame and says that they both could have handled things differently. Which is fair, like although he did have some progression in the fact that he didn't just beat him up immediately, he did go on to beat him up with his words instead. Noah then says that they've been fighting a lot lately and she excuses this as being due to the fact that she feels like she's been under a lot of pressure lately and being due to the fact that they haven't gotten any alone time. But Noah feels as though it's more than that and that they've been trying too hard. He then wonders what will happen if they both keep trying and then years down the line, it's just too late. That she'll have already given up too much for him and he worries that she's going to regret it. But then she interjects saying that that's for her to decide and that she knows what's best for her. But what Elle doesn't know is that these feelings aren't just coming out of nowhere. Before their 4th of July party, Noah actually found her acceptance letter to Berkeley. So now he knows that she lied about being waitlisted and feels guilty for making her change her plans for him. And so he expresses to her that he doesn't want to be one of those people that makes her put herself last. And then he encourages her to reapply to Berkeley and go to school with Lee like she originally wanted. But then Elle just gets upset with him for thinking that he can make these decisions for her. And then he kind of takes another decision away from her by saying that if she does decide to go to Boston, it's not going to be with him. So essentially breaking up with her. I know better than trying to stop you going to Boston. <laughs> but if you do decide to go, it's not gonna be with me. Now, while I do understand where Noah is coming from here, I feel like he loses a bit of his point by breaking up with her. Because if he truly believed that she was capable of making this decision on her own, then let her do that. In a strange way, I feel like by breaking up with her, he's also taking away that choice from her. But I guess the point is that he doesn't believe that she can do that, and so that's why he has to break up with her. And it does prove the point that like, if she truly wanted to go to Boston, she would, whether they're together or not. But now I feel weird because this usually isn't how we end things, especially not when we have a ship that's kind of a bit more on the toxic side. But but in a way, that is it for these two, at least for the time being. Which I honestly feel like is pretty refreshing for the creators to be aware of their toxicity and the severity of this conflict. And I really respect them for choosing to not appease the fans and just have them get back together anyway. And I honestly like the idea of them waiting till later down the line to rekindle things. I feel like it's a solution I offer for a lot of ships that we cover on this channel. And so it's cool to see it actually getting utilized here, but I am getting a little bit ahead of myself. Then we have the end of summer party where Elle says that she kept waiting for Noah to arrive and that she desperately wants to see him again, but is also dreading it. She does see Marco though, and so the two of them do get a chance to say goodbye as well. Meanwhile, Lee questions Noah about their breakup and asks if he did it so that she could go to college with him, but he says that there were lots of reasons as to why they broke up and that he didn't want her to make a decision that she'd regret. And he says that he's going to continue to protect her even though they're no longer together. But Lee says that he doesn't need to, that she's always been able to take care of herself, and that all she needed from him was for him to love her. Which I feel like is a little bit easier said than done when she's doing things like, I don't know, cheating on him in front of everybody, but that's just my two cents. So Noah asks if she's going to Berkeley with him, and he reveals that she's actually applying to USC for video game design. And then all of this brings us to their last scene together as teens. While cleaning out the beach house, Elle comes up with the idea of recreating a photo of them as kids to give to their mom. Lee and Noah agree to this, and during their photo session, he asks her about USC. She explains that it's a really competitive program and that she probably won't even get in, but he encourages her, saying that she can do anything she puts her mind to. He then apologizes for things not working out between the two of them, and 
she says me too before they hug. Before he leaves, he requests that she not forget about him, which I feel like would be a little bit of a hard task to do considering how close their families are. But then he walks off and after he's gone, she says goodbye to him to herself. Now, honestly, for that being their last scene together as teens, I feel like that's a little bit lackluster, but I guess it's okay because we do have the jump forward. So then we jump ahead six years later. And again, we're supposed to believe that these two haven't seen each other at all during that time. But I just find that hard to believe when her and Lee are still besties and she's so close with their family that she calls their mom, mom as well. But anyways, it's six years later and Lee and Elle are now attending their school's fundraiser once again. Because I know what you guys are thinking. I mean, this is the kissing booth three and we haven't even seen a kissing booth. Well, you're in for a treat. So while wandering the carnival, they come to see that the kissing booth that they came up with is still being used. Once Elle sees it, she says that for a second, she almost felt that same thrill and rush that she had the night that she had her first kiss. And then of course, Noah walks in in a full on suit for some reason. They were probably just like, how do we make this guy look older? He is already so freaking tall. Um, let's put him in a suit, why not? So they joke about seeing the booth again and Elle compliments him saying that he looks businessy. She says that Lee told her about his job offers and he explains that he has one in New York and LA and isn't sure which one he's going to go with. So obviously they're hinting at the possibility of the two of them being in LA together. Then they reminisce on when they were younger and she reveals that she has her own bike now. This causes him to ask that they go on a bike ride together next time he's in town, but only if she'd like that and she says that she would. He then says that he has to go, but that he'll call her and then she takes a note from his book saying only if he has time, which he earnestly says that he does. They then do an awkward hand thing as he leaves and then she watches him walk off. I'm gonna go. Okay. Okay. All right. <laughs> I'll see you later. Okay. See you. Okay, bye. Bye. <laughs> Then he gets to the top of the stairs before pausing and turning around to wave goodbye to her, which is a pretty dang good full circle moment if you ask me. It's honestly crazy how one simple gesture can show how much he's changed and hint at the fact that they're going to try again this time, but it's going to be different than when they were kids. But of course, this is still a cheesy teen movie after all. So then we end with Elle saying that after seeing Noah again, she couldn't help but think about how all of this happened because of a kissing booth. And then the movie comes to an end with the two of them riding their bikes through the mountains once again. And so that's that, that wraps up Elle and Noah's love story from The Kissing Booth. Overall, I feel like it's safe to say that the first Kissing Booth movie isn't that bad. The second one, I don't know, I could do without it, but it exists nonetheless. And the third one is definitely the worst one out of the three and I probably would not recommend watching it. And I'm honestly really glad that I did this video because I feel like it gave me a new appreciation for the series and the ship as well. I feel like I keep finding myself putting all of my time and energy into ships that I thought that I didn't like and then I end up actually enjoying them by the end of it. Or maybe that's just a testament to how good I am at explaining things. Like I feel like when I'm just reading off what happens in this movie, I'm like, yeah, that's that's cute. Whereas when I was sitting down watching it, I was definitely cringing throughout most of it. But again, maybe that's just a testament to the fact that this story probably worked better in book form. And while I do agree that these movies have their faults, at the end of the day, they are just a fun movie series that we really don't have to take that seriously. But I will say something that I do really appreciate about it, which I feel like I didn't talk about during this whole like hour long video, is the fact that Elle and Lee's relationship is a healthy depiction of a boy-girl friendship with no romantic undertones whatsoever, which was honestly really refreshing to watch. But I wanna know your thoughts on these two as well as the Kissing Booth series overall, so please leave them in the comments down below. I can't wait to read all about it. I personally am really excited about The Doors. I feel like covering them opens for me. Like I feel like now I can talk about the To All The Boys series or maybe even the After series. Let me know what you guys wanna see because I feel like anything is on the table now. We can talk about anything. I talked about The Kissing Booth for crying out loud, so nothing is off limits. But with all that being said, that is all I have to say for today. So I hope you all have a wonderful day and I'll talk to you very, very soon. I feel like I did my outro differently, but that's kind of because, I don't know, I feel like I should weed it out. Like I always end up talking at the end of my videos anyways. And so like, what's the point of the outro? I don't know.